Good evening. My name is Brooke Green. I'm the project manager on this Hollister concept study. It's a privilege to be before you. Uh, we've got a few attendees, but we're going to move this project and this meeting this evening right through all of our concepts and conversations. But before we get started on reviewing the concept, Hollister concept, and the most recent iterations that we're going to move for you, I do want to go over a couple of things. I want to reiterate that this meeting is being recorded and our closed captioning. So if you have concerns about closed captioning, um, unfortunately, our closed captioning isn't necessarily working. The details of that are in the chat. So if you need to get in touch with me following this meeting, certainly do so. Do want to go over a couple other things too. When we get to the end of the meeting, we're going to be using menti.com and you see the information there at the top of the screen. While I'm going through the presentation, I would encourage you log on to menti.com, use the code that's reflected there, 4598-1521. That is going to allow you to participate in the Q&A section at the end of tonight's presentation. So this is my second time before at the neighborhood to have this review this evening. I want to thank those who participated earlier. We're at the 530 session. We had several neighbors participate earlier in our meeting. There is a couple of ways in which you guys can participate as we move forward. And so should you have any questions, you're certainly able, and I want to encourage you to go to Q&A to provide any questions that pertain to the project itself that you want our technical team to review. As I go through tonight's presentation, they're going to be on there logging on, reviewing each one of those questions and providing feedback. If you want to chat with one another, certainly you're welcome to do so. The chat function is there to allow you to do it. I do ask, there's a couple ground rules. Please be respectful of one another while we recognize um, projects like this can get people really interested and there's a lot of passions that come out. We ask that you respect your neighbors. Please do not use foul language if you're chatting back and forth. With that being said, we're going to jump on over to the landing page for the Collister Concept Study. And before we go any further down this page, I want to highlight that this is also reflected in our survey at achdidaho.org. And you can log on there, take a look at the projects themselves, be able to find this project and provide feedback in the survey. We also provided door hangers throughout Collister out there on the neighborhood. And we've also sent out email reminders. So if your neighbors haven't participated, I want to encourage them to log online, participate in the survey after tonight's meeting. So with that being said, let's kind of jump into the project itself. So before you, if for whatever reason you have any questions following this evening's meeting, I want to encourage you to go to projects at achdidaho.org or you can give me a call at 208-387-6318. This, if I'm available following the virtual meetings. I certainly am available should you have any questions. I've gone out to the street with meet with many residents and I'd be happy to do it once again. We'll go ahead and just go over a view of how we got here. We have been at this project for now almost a full, uh, what, a full year. We came to you early on June of 2021 where we engaged with folks along the corridor to give us some feedback about what potential options could be done to enhance this for bikes and pets. We took it a little bit further in December. We came back out with, to you with some concepts, wanting to engage with you to get some ideas, solicit that feedback. It is because of the feedback at our second open house that we're before you again today. Because since December till now, our technical team went and did a little bit deeper dive based off of the feedback. We heard from you. We heard tree canopy as well as minimize property impacts was incredibly important. So we took some time as a team and we went back and we evaluated the concepts that we proposed to the impacts to properties as well as the impact to tree canopy. And the solutions and options we're bringing before you today took that into account. I'll go over each one of those in more depth here in a moment, but that is where we're at with this project. The projects that we're showing you today, the alternatives, there's two of them. We're gonna go through each one. We're gonna pick one alternative to move forward in the months of September and October to our commission for them to consider for adoption. With that, we'll go ahead and move into the projects. Uh, we heard, or sorry, we'll move into what we heard from you in the earlier iteration that we came out to the public. As I mentioned, there were three concepts, one, two, and three. Those are the respondents and the list of how each one of those ranked based off of the feedback from the public. This, as I mentioned, occurred in December. We had all, uh, we did take into account those who resided on Collister and who didn't reside on Collister. We really want to highlight, it is incredibly important we hear from the neighbors, those who reside on Collister and what these impacts would potentially look like. 
So you see the breakdown there, one, two, and three. Just so happens concept two and three is what we brought before you today. So I'm gonna talk about quickly why concept one was removed from the table. So concept one was eliminated for consideration moving forward. If you can click on concept one, and this is why it did receive the fewest number of responses in favor from folks who both resided and users of the streets. There's a lot of concerns about parking on the west side could increase re, uh, risk for cyclists because as you see there, the southbound bike facility is at grade with the vehicles and is separated by a buffer. And so several folks expressed concerns that there is that door, uh, that door hit that potentially could occur from cars that are parked on the street. In addition, express concerns that there's not enough large buffer between the bike lane and the vehicle travel lanes. And so in addition to that, and couple it with this is the largest footprint and thus had the greatest impacts of trees and properties, concept one was eliminated for any further consideration. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and take back, uh, talk back to some of the actions that we took that got us to this point. More importantly, that survey we conducted between December and now to address trees. If we could scroll down a little bit. So concept two, which is our smallest footprint that we're going to present to you this evening. Originally, when we had this concept before you back in December, we did an evaluation of how many trees would be impacted. And we identified approximately 41 trees. Based off of our evaluation and some modifications that we made on concept one, we were able to save 24, approximately 24 trees moving forward. So that revision now looks that should concept two be the front runner and the one in which the public wants, there's a potential impact of 17 trees along the corridor. As it pertains to concept three, we'll scroll down here. When we brought that one before the public, as I mentioned, concept three is the largest footprint. Originally, we anticipate that there's going to be 57 trees impacted. Based off of the feedback we received from the residents as well as the users of Collister, and after that evaluation, we modified concept three, and with that revision, we were able to save approximately 28 trees. So the revised concept that we're gonna go over here in a moment has approximately 29 trees impacted along the corridor. So both of these halves are incredibly different than one another. And as a result, we do believe that both concepts that are being put for, before you do provide a level of protection for both cyclists as well as pedestrians. With that, we'll go ahead and jump to concept two and review what that looks like. So concept two is still under consideration. I'm gonna highlight some of the modifications we made to lessen the impact to both properties as well as trees. So if we can scroll up, but before I go and do that, I wanna highlight what this cross section does look like. So you have got parking on the west side. Parking on the west side is the same for both concept two as well as concept three. The travel lanes were reduced to 10 and a half feet, and that is both the same for concept two and concept three. The travel lanes were reduced because that is actually a traffic calming measure in which we can take. I wanna highlight 10 and a half feet travel lanes is actually a standard application that is seen throughout many of our streets. A good example is some work that we just recently completed on Kootenai Street that is under construction here in the next year. Kootenai Street did have a reduction of their vehicle travel lanes, primarily to be able to address concerns regarding speeding, because it, as I mentioned, it is a traffic calming measure. You're going to see the footprint listed below that is highlighted, and that is highlighted because throughout the corridor that, that does change. One of the other things that's highlighted is the buffer space as well as the multi-use pathway. For concept two and concept three, to mitigate property impacts, we did reduce the multi-use pathway from 11 to 10 feet. You'll notice there that the buffer has a range from one to three feet. Throughout the corridor to mitigate property impacts as well as tree impacts, we looked to certain parcels and made a determination that reducing the buffer between one to three feet would enable us to ensure that we could have less of an impact both on trees as well as properties. Some other things I wanna highlight about this concept. There are several bulb outs along the corridor that again is also a traffic calming measure, but it also enhances pedestrian crossing and enhanced pedestrian safety. As I mentioned, there's on-street parking, but I wanna highlight that on-street parking between State Street and Catulpa and John's Landing and Hill Road. Between John's Landing and Catulpa, the parking on the west side is removed to accommodate additional on-street uh, pipe facilities. We also have RFB crossings there at 
north of State Street and John's Landing to help facilitate folks getting across Collister. If we can crew, uh, scroll on down a little bit more, on the east side, there you'll see some of our updates to that, but I'm gonna go scroll down just a little bit more and wanna highlight as you guys review this, the modifications, as I mentioned in conversation a moment ago, reduced multi-use pathway was one of the big ones, but also narrowing the buffer. And that's because we wanted to ensure that there was an opportunity for us to mitigate property as well as tree canopy impacts. We'll scroll on down a little bit more, draw your attention to Catulpa to John's Landing, because this is a little bit different than the rest of the corridor. Why this location, Catulpa to John's Landing, on the west side, there are no front on housing. And as a result, it enables us to put a bike facility on the road to help facilitate people who are using the Northwest Boise bikeway. That bikeway comes off of John's Landing, comes south down on Collister, and then it goes eastbound on Catulpa. This bike lane, this on-street bike lane, is protected with a buffer and is only for the segment between Catulpa to John's Landing. Let's scroll on down a little bit more want to kind of highlight this is what the street itself looks like today with the installation of concept number two this gives you visual rendering of what you can anticipate once the construction is complete there you've got that multi-use pathway the buffer the vehicle travel lanes and then the on-street parking well crows on down each one of these have some benefits i highlighted many of those already certainly the pedestrian enhancements does provide for designated space for folks to navigate through this corridor as I mentioned, this has the smallest footprint and thus minimizes impacts to both adjacent property owners. Pullbouts and RFBs are actually the same for both concept two and three. And as I highlighted, is a traffic calming measure as well as pedestrian enhancement for folks navigating through this corridor. But every project has its own challenges. This one does have a particular challenge because all the pedestrian as well as the cyclists are encouraged to use only the facilities on the east side, the multi-use pathway. Well, that doesn't prevent cyclists from taking the tra uh, travel lanes as they do today. The multi-use pathway is only on one location. It's the only pedestrian facility located on one side of the road. Thus, if there's any type of construction or enhancements that need to occur at that multi-use pathway location, a pedestrian detour is a little bit more difficult because we cannot move them across the street because there are not adjacent property uh, adjacent pedestrian facilities. Thus, we have to use traffic control companies to be able to navigate folks having to get around that construction. Scrolling down. Both concept two and concept three do meet our level of pedestrian, uh, level of traffic stress for both pedestrians as well as cyclists. For pedestrians, it's two, as well as cyclists, it's one. That it does meet ACHG's new adopted standard by being able to provide adequate facilities for cyclists of all ages to navigate through this corridor, as well as a level of protection and enhancement for pedestrians navigating this space. They, as I mentioned, are the same for both two and three. We'll go ahead to scroll down here. I'm not gonna flip through each one of these aerials, but do wanna give you an idea of what those look like. The blue in this location, in this is designates parking, whereas the multi-use pathway there is designated there with a striped pathway at the bottom on each side of each, uh, each picture. In your own time, I wanna encourage you guys to take a look at that, scroll through each one of those. Um, if you scroll through them at home, you're going to be able to enlarge it and get a better feel and a better picture of what that looks like. Um, everything to the side, why concept two is still in consideration. It's because I mentioned, it was one of the front runners out of the original uh, outreach that we conducted back in December. It does have that level of stress for both both cyclists as well as pedestrians, enhancing their quality to be uh, quality, being able to navigate through this area safely. And as I mentioned, it does have the smallest footprint and less of an impact both to the decent property owners and the tree canopy. With that, we're gonna jump into concept three. So concept three is the second uh, option that is before you. This one, as I mentioned, still under consideration. This one is the largest footprint, and we're going to go through some details. So as you're going to notice on this one is there are pedestrian facilities both on the east and the west side of this. You have got the sidewalk depicted there on the west side. You've got a parking lane, two travel lanes, the buffer, and the multi-use pathway. You're going to notice there are some highlights here as well, the multi-use pathway. The 10 feet reflect the recent changes that we made, reducing it by one foot. And then the buffer highlighted there as we go throughout the corridor to minimize impacts to properties as well as the tree canopy, we have looked at each parcel 
And as a result, we could reduce the buffer at those locations to ensure that we have less of an impact to both the adjacent property as well as the tree canopy. On the west side, um, besides bulb outs and RFBs, that's the same as I mentioned earlier with concept two. If we can scroll down a little bit more, um, it's the, this east side stays the same except for the location between John's Landing and Catulpa. Whereas in concept two between John's Landing and Catulpa, you had on-street bike facilities. In this case, it's actually going to be another additional multi-use pathway. And you can see that depicted here. We'll scroll on down a little bit more. So with each project, there are some benefits and some drawbacks. Um, first, before I jump into the benefits, want to highlight what is it going to look like? And this is a nice rendering that you can get a depiction of the multi-use pathway, the buffer, both the vehicle travel lanes, on-street parking, as well as the sidewalk. The benefits to this, as I mentioned earlier, the travel lanes stay the same, so you still have that traffic calming element that's added to this. In addition to that, you have pedestrian facilities on both sides of the roadway. So should folks want to navigate either on the east or the west side, there it is not necessary for them to cross. They can certainly access that on both sides. The biggest difference is, as I mentioned, is the on-street, I'm sorry, removing the on-street parking between John's Landing as well as Catalpa, where we made it a multi-use pathway. Bulb out RFBs stay the same as they were reflected there in concept two. However, there are some challenges with this one. For us to mitigate tree impacts throughout this corridor, we did look at certain locations to remove on-street parking on the east side. Whereas through this uh, concept two, we only removed parking on the west side. There is some locations along the corridor, I'm sorry, we removed parking on the east side with concept three to mitigate impacts to both properties as well as tree canopy, we did remove a couple locations parking, and I'm going to go over those here in a moment. As uh, different from concept two to this one, this one has the biggest footprints, and as a result, has the largest significant tree impact. So we go to the aerials and get an idea of what that looks like. So you see the aerials here. Um, I'll draw your attention really briefly, as I mentioned earlier. This is a pedestrian level of traffic stress. It is a two. Bicycle level of traffic stress is a one. That is the exact same as concept two. What I'd like to do is just draw your attention to the second photo, the second aerial at the bottom. And you have got there in blue represents on street parking. This is a really good example of some of the considerations we took. So we have on-street parking up until you see the bulb out, and I'm going to have my person hover. That is a location where we went to look at the trees, the tree maturity, and made a decision that we could remove parking at that location because adjacent streets does provide for parking in an effort to mitigate tree impacts. If we could go ahead and click over, and I want to highlight where we made a uh, change to mitigate tree as well as property impacts. The bottom picture, and if you go over to Bloom right here and you hover a little bit, you're going to see at this location we reduce the buffer width. And this reduction of the buffer width allowed us to mitigate impacts to 17 trees along this property. We follow the same type of approach throughout the whole corridor. You'll see it when we get further up to Hill Road, where along that corridor we also make some changes to the buffer to accommodate tree impact. This was part of our analysis that we did um, some of our findings that we realized, you know, if we're going to achieve putting pedestrian facilities on this corridor, we were trying based off of feedback to lessen impacts to both property as well as trees. So this concludes this portion of the presentation. We'll scroll down a little bit. And so why is number three still under consideration? This was the front runner out of our original outreach efforts. Um, folks look to this as being able to provide the highest level of protection for both pedestrians and cyclists navigating through this area. It does meet uh, ACHD's commitment to providing bike and pedestrian facilities for all ages, uh, a one for you know, cyclists as well as a two for pedestrians. We're quite confident that both two and three achieve the goal of this project, which is to provide for pedestrian and bicycle facilities throughout Collister, because that is what we heard was one of the greatest needs that people wanted to see along this corridor, including both residents as well as users. So I quickly just want to go over our schedule and our next step. That concludes the introduction of concepts two and three, but it doesn't conclude how many opportunities that you guys will have to participate moving forward. 
We're going to conclude our survey in one week, at which point we're going to take our technical analysis, look to see what concept between two and three is more appropriate. In October and into November, you can anticipate we'll be going before the commission. You will have one opportunity, one more opportunity to present your concerns to our commissioners. While it is our technical staff who makes the recommendation, it is ultimately left up to our commissioners to make a determination if the project will be adopted and which concept they will consider and which one they will adopt. You will have an opportunity, as I said, it's an evening hearing, so you can present your concerns, questions, or support for the project at that hearing. Prior to that hearing, you'll have access to the final, per, uh, final report where we make our recommendation and certainly able to provide any emails or correspondence to the commission at that time. With that being said, scroll down just really quick. The survey's open till September 1st. I wanna encourage you to get out there and participate. If your neighbors have not participated online this evening, um, do encourage them to get on there and provide some feedback. If we can take an opportunity, we're gonna ask you guys a series of questions. Would love for you to engage with us. It, can you go to www.menti.com? You're gonna use the code 45981521. Log on if you haven't already done so, and I will pause for a moment. But the first question I'm going to ask you is, which of the two concepts presented for Callister Drive do you prefer? While I recognize um, the attendees for the second meeting are not necessarily the same attendees for the first meeting, but all this information that you presented in the Q&A, as well as the chat, will be saved in perpetuity as this project moves forward. So I want to encourage you guys if your neighbors aren't in here participating tonight, participate in the survey because all this information is saved so that we can report it in our outreach. I'm gonna pause for a moment, give you guys a chance to log on here. If there's anybody else who needs to get onto menti.com. We have approximately six to eight public attendees. We have three who's providing response. Um, I'll pause just a little bit longer as I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to jump on menti.com. Uh, we'll give a few more moments. Uh, however, it looks as though concept two is, is a front runner of the attendees who have participated thus far. Well, um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up question number one. It looks as though concept two is the front runner. Again, if you're providing any questions in our Q&A, all of those are going to be saved for public record. If um, there's any additional comments that you wanna make, you're certainly welcome to put them in there. But I will be asking a question here in a moment that will allow you to provide additional comments as we get through. So with that being said, let's move on to question number two. Please explain why you prefer one concept over the other. If you don't like either, please let us know. I'll give you a moment to answer that as you may want to write out a few things. Right. We have one attendee uh, that has provided some feedback, less impact, but still a vast improvement. I'm assuming a vast improvement over existing conditions. Um, does anybody else want to take this time to provide some feedback? If not, we can move on to the next question here in about 40 seconds. Neither is really good for bike commuters going through this state to Hill Road but having a sidewalk is a key need. I'm concerned that people will park overlapping the sidewalk in option number three. 
didn't think that actually is all of our attendees. I'll give it a few more seconds. All right, if we can just move on to the next question. Is there anything we missed or special considerations you'd like for us to take into account? Um, I do want to highlight this. Much of our conversations that occurred at our first open house and our additional technical evaluation we did on the tree canopy and property impacts was because we received feedback from folks not only who reside on Collister but who use Collister. And so want to encourage you if you have anything, highlight anything we missed or any special considerations you'd like for us to take into account, here's a great opportunity in which to do it. All right, awfully quiet. I'll give it a few more. I'll give it about 30 more seconds. And we can move on to the next question. Driveway intersections with multi-use pathways create risk for drivers backing out, hitting bikes as they will not, not be out in the traffic lane. Nope, you and your team have done a fantastic job. Thank you. Give it one more as I, I know that there's three attendees who are providing feedback, but it's not necessary to answer every question either. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Please share any additional comments you have about this project and certainly this is opportunity to share. This is our last question um, and we do take all your feedback and provide it to the technical team. I'll give you a moment to fill that out. All right, as I mentioned, it's not necessary to answer. Oh, here we go. Let's get it done. Appreciate your process and engagement. Thank you. I would have liked to have seen concept one considered again, but I'm happy to see facilities for pedestrians. Certainly understand. And we'll, and just to speak to that, and just to highlight, when we put projects forward such as this where we're trying to look to enhance a neighborhood for bikes and pedestrians one thing really important to know is oftentimes we look to build these facilities for all users we look to the 8 to 80 is what we oftentimes call our age group that we want to build for we recognize that there's folks who use these corridors as commuter cyclists to navigate through it and we're we're very well aware that they're quite comfortable navigating on the street itself when we do enhancements like this we're looking to be able to provide facilities for eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, where parents feel comfortable with their kids navigating through this. Concept one had on-street bike facilities, and as a result, a lot of folks don't necessarily feel that's the highest level of protection. And so multi-use pathway was the front runner moving forward because oftentimes it is the most comfortable for folks of all ages to use. So that's just kind of a further analysis and um, you know, feedback based off of why some of these projects move forward the way they do. And then lastly, I agree concept one is being good to reconsider. I certainly appreciate your basis feedback. So this concludes our Q&A segment of our presentation. As I mentioned, all of this does become public record. It is shared and uh, evaluated both by our technical team as well as you know, provided feedback to our commission. I want to go back to the landing page, just kind of reiterate some opportunities for which you can engage moving forward. So the concept itself, as I mentioned, we're going to conclude uh, in November. The idea is to bring it to the, to the commission for consideration for adoption. But before we do that, there are so many more opportunities in which you can get in touch with me. I wanna highlight if for whatever reason you had neighbors or other users of Collister unable to attend today or have any questions and like me to answer them, 
projects at achdidaho.org. You can certainly send me an email or you can call me at 208-387-6318. I wanna encourage you to get in touch with your friends and family and neighbors who may have not participated this evening and encourage them to participate in the survey. The survey will be open until September 1st. All of the feedback we'll take back to our technical team. And I wanna highlight who our technical team is. Our technical team is made up of experts who either from City of Boise, ACHD, in addition, uh, the Boise School District, as well as Valley Regional Transit are informed of all of our progress as we move this project forward. If you want to participate or provide public feedback at the hearing, that is likely to occur in the month of November. You will get information either via email. So if you haven't provided your email through this process, I wanna encourage you which to do so because you're invited back to provide any additional feedback to the commission. As I mentioned, the technical team only provides recommendation. It is left up to the commissioners to make the final determination which concept they like to move forward if they wanna move a concept forward at all. So you have another opportunity to communicate to them directly. With that being said, this concludes our presentation this evening. Your Q&A that you provided in the actual box to my right um, is certainly taken into account. We're going to hold on to that as public record. And this uh, presentation today was recorded, and so it'll also be readily available for those who couldn't attend. Again, surveys open till September 1st. Encourage your neighbors, your family, your friends, and the users of Collister. Get on there, give us some feedback. It's incredibly important. And we look forward to hearing from you, and we look forward to concluding this project come this fall. It's been a privilege working with all of you. Enjoy your evening. Was there a brand new participant who just logged on? I think gentleman by the name of Bradley. You can't answer. So I'm gonna assume you did. And uh, because we went through this presentation fairly quick, Bradley, if you can hold on for one minute, I will start the presentation once more so we can ensure that we get your feedback. Um, for everybody else who already participated, you're certainly welcome to stay online, but because we have a little bit more time to get through this and you just logged on, I will go ahead and run us through it in one minute. So hold tight and we will be back before you in a moment. All right, so um, Bradley, we're gonna have some conversations. Although you can't participate back with me, you can chat with me via the chat function and then certainly throw any Q and A's in. If we got anybody else who joins us, we'll quickly bring them up to speed, but we're gonna go ahead and walk through this presentation in just a moment. And it, I was just informed you can't see me either, so now you can. All right, with that being said, welcome Bradley. I'm just gonna get personal and call you by your, for, your first name, um, but certainly want to invite you to participate this evening, like I said, through chat or Q&A. Give you a quick rundown. The chat is, if we wanna go back and forth, the Q&A, if you have any very specific questions that you would like for us to capture as public record, I wanna encourage you to put it in Q&A. I have technical staff on standby who is going to provide feedback and answer your question. With that said, I'm gonna run through this presentation and should folks jump on board, we'll hopefully bring them up to speed. So 
back into uh, June, it was about the first time we ever introduced this project. So we've been at this for almost a, full, a little over a full year. In December, we came back to the public and to the Collister neighborhood. We engaged with you and presented some concepts for consideration. It was at those concepts uh, when we presented to the public that we received feedback. And more importantly, the feedback that we received was property impacts and tree canopy impacts was incredibly important. So what we did is we spent the last couple of months looking into both property impacts and tree canopy to figure out a means in which we can reduce the concept alternatives to mitigate property impacts as well as tree impacts. We did that this past spring and this past summer, and now we're before you to introduce two concepts that are the front runners that we want you guys to consider. So moving on to the next slide, what we heard following the first introduction of our concepts, you're gonna see them listed there, concept one, concept two, concept three. You're also gonna see how we split it up all respondents, Hollister Drive residents and then adjacent street residents. Why did we focus and have a call out for Hollister Drive residents? Because we recognize that this is a neighborhood and a street in which you live on. And so it's incredibly important to hear feedback from you. You're gonna see concept one, two, and three broken out. Concept one, as a result of the feedback we received was eliminated. Concept two and concept three, we're going over this evening, but we made some modifications because we wanted to lessen the impact to properties and we wanted to lessen the impact to trees. With that being said, if we can jump over to actions, take, actually, let's go back to concept one and let's just reiterate what was concept one. So concept one was removed for consideration for several reasons. More importantly, before I jump into those reasons, I wanna highlight what was concept one. Concept one and all concepts two and three only had parking on the west side. In particular, concept one, however, the southbound bike facility was at grade with the vehicle travel lanes. And then on the east side, you has a raised bike lane and then you had a sidewalk. Because of the at grade bike lane, several participants, several folks who provided feedback did not necessarily feel that it provided the highest level of safety for cyclists navigating through this space. Not only do they have concerns with the vehicles who are traveling through the area, but they also have concerns with parked vehicles opening their doors and potentially hitting the cyclists. In addition, this is the largest footprint and thus had the greatest impact on both trees and properties. As a result of all of those factors, concept one was eliminated for consideration moving forward. Now I wanna jump back to actions taken. As I highlighted earlier when we were chatting, uh, we went ahead and made some modifications, took concept one off the table, but went back to look at concept two and three to figure out a way, can we mitigate tree and property impacts? So quickly to go over concept two. Originally, when we brought concept two out to the public, we evaluated, made a determination that we would potentially impact 41 trees. We went back and looked at concept two, identified opportunities for us to mitigate and modify the concept. As a result, the newest revision allowed us to save approximately 24 trees. So thus, should concept two be moved forward, throughout the whole corridor, the potential impact to trees would be approximately 17. As it uh, pertains to concept two, if we can scroll down, concept, I'm sorry, yeah, concept three. As it pertains to concept three, this is the largest footprint we're gonna go over this evening. Originally, when we took concept three to the public and we went and did our tree evaluation, we identified approximately 57 trees that would potentially be impacted. Made some modifications to concept three. As a result, we were able to save 28. Therefore, throughout the whole corridor itself, should concept three be the one that is moved forward, there's approximately 29 trees that would be potentially impacted. This modification we'll go over here in a moment. So we'll go, let's scroll over and look at concept two really quick. So concept two is still under consideration and I'll quickly go over what that looks like. Concept two still has that parking on the west side. That's the same for concept three as well. The travel lane is about approximately 10 and a half feet. 10 and a half feet, and just to quickly talk to that, in several locations around Ada County, 10 and a half feet is become our standard, not our standard, but certainly a lane width that is recognized. I wanna talk in particular to Kootenai Street. Kootenai Street is a project we recently are going under construction with, where you will see the reduction of the width of the travel lane to approximately 10 and a half feet. 10 and a half feet does provide a traffic calming measure. And why that's important is because one of the feedbacks and what we heard from participants was people speed through this area. And thus we wanted to put in several traffic calming opportunities as we could. 
In this concept, you're going to see the one to three foot buffer and the multi-use pathway. Something to note, they're highlighted. They're highlighted because throughout this corridor to mitigate both property and tree impacts, we either have to reduce the buffer from one to three feet. So there's several properties along the corridor in which we do so. Something else to note is it used to be an 11 foot multi-use pathway and we reduced it to one. And that was primarily to ensure that we had less of a property impact and less of a tree canopy impact. Some other highlights that pertain to both concept two and three, there's bull belts throughout the corridor that again is a traffic calming measure. In addition to that, it does uh, provide another opportunity for pedestrians to safely cross uh, the actual road itself because it's reducing their crossing width. On street parking between State and Catulpa and Johns Landing and Hill Road is removed and it's primarily because through that location there is not front on housing and thus we're able to provide an additional bike facility, which I'll highlight here in a moment. Uh, in addition to that, proposals along the portion of Collister, we have several opportunities where we're going to have to address drainage and add vertical curb elements. Moving along, the modifications we made since uh, December 2021, I've already highlighted and spoken to on several occasions, but do want to reiterate, we did make these modifications based off of feedback. Well, this location, if we can scroll back up, Catulpa to John's Landing, I highlighted that in a conversation just a moment ago where I mentioned that there will not be parking on the west side between Catulpa Drive and John's Landing and that's because there's not front on housing but what that enables us to do is put in another bike facility and in this case it's an on on at grade bike lane with a buffer this provides those who are navigating the northwest Boise bikeway from John's Landing, they're able to go down Collister on this bike facility and then cross over Catulpa. So it's a great connection to ensure that people can navigate through that space. Scrolling along, we're gonna move on to an aerial visual of what this potentially could look like. Oh, I'm sorry, before I do that, let me give you a picture visual of what this um, application is going to look like. This is what your street currently looks like. And once we apply concept two to this, if we could just move that picture image over, this is what that looks like once that's applied. Again, the multi-use pathway is only located on the east side. You've got the buffer in the vehicle travel lanes and the west side parking. With every project, there's benefits and then there's drawbacks. As I mentioned, the benefit is this is the smallest footprint and thus it does minimize impacts to both property owners. Bull belts and RRFBs are the same for both concept two and three, providing for additional enhancement for pedestrians navigating this space. I do wanna highlight a couple of the challenges, however. This concept does only provide a multi-use pathway there on the east side, and thus there are no pedestrian facilities on the west side. What that means is should there ever be construction on that multi-use pathway, we do not have adjacent uh, facilities to help detour pedestrians through this corridor. As a result, we would have to use a traffic control company to help with that mitigation. Moving on, I'd like to just jump on over to concept three. Oh, I'm sorry, no, before I do that, I apologize. Riley, stay with me. We're gonna go back to concept two. Here's that aerial visual I wanted to provide. I'm not gonna flip through each one of these. I wanna encourage you to do it on your own time where you can actually enlarge it a little bit better. But I do just wanna highlight a couple of things. The pedestrian level of stress and the bicycle level of stress. ACHG has a recent adoption of the level of stress and it's really a guideline. It provides some thresholds in which we want to achieve to ensure that we're providing the best facilities for pedestrians and the best facility for cyclists. Ideally, we want both of those to be two or better. In this case, both on concept two as well as concept three, pedestrian level of stress is at two, whereas a bicycle level of stress is at one. And it is the bicycle level of stress being one, it's because we have removed the cyclists from that vehicle travel lane, giving them their designated space in which to navigate through this area. Do you want to highlight that you're able to, on your own time, scroll through each one of these aerials and get a visual of what that looks like, look and see how it is if your property is adjacent. Um, but I'm not going to go in too much depth on this one because I'm going to spend a little bit more time there on concept three going over it. With that, let's get to concept three. So concept three, this is uh, one of the two options before you want to get some feedback. Supple, some things to note. You're going to notice the biggest difference is the sidewalk there on the west side. So in essence, what you have is you have pedestrians facilities on the east as well as the west side. And in this case, on the west side, you have that sidewalk. You have that parking lane, which is the same for both concept two and three. Those vehicle travel lanes, a redu reduction down to 10 and a half feet 
travel lanes, which is about a width that we see commonly throughout Ada County. That one to three foot buffer, there's a range because as I'm gonna highlight here in a moment, there are some locations along the corridor we reduce it so we can mitigate both uh, mitigate property as well as tree canopy impacts. And lastly, that 10 foot multi-use pathway reduction from 11 to 10, again, it's to mitigate those things. Everything else stays the same as it pertains to the RFBs and the bulb outs. The biggest difference, however, is at, uh, not pardon me, is at John's Landing to Cotopa. I don't know if you can scroll down a little bit. This is one of the biggest changes that you don't see there reflected in concept two. As mentioned in concept two, as well as concept three. In this location between Catulpa to John's Landing, on the west side, there are no front on housing. As a result, we're able to enhance that location with pedestrian and bicycle facilities. In this case, we are making the proposal to insert a multi-use pathway at this location. So for folks who are navigating between Catulpa to John's Landing on the Northwest Boise Bikeway, they're able to come off of Catulpa, turn onto Collister, go south. But in this case, they're gonna ride on a multi-use pathway that has a three foot buffer. They'll get to John's Landing, be able to cross at John's Landing and continue east on the Northwest Boise Bikeway. This is probably the biggest change as put compared to concept two, as that is not an on-street bike facility, that is a multi-use pathway. Scroll on down a little bit more. This is what your guys' road looks like as it is today. Should this be applied, this gives you a really nice depiction of what that is. Again, that sidewalk, on-street parking, vehicle travel lanes, buffer, as well as that multi-use pathway. Some other types of improvements through this corridor will highlight if you scroll down a little bit more. So bulb outs, RFBs stay the same, parking does stay the same. However, with every project, there's benefits and then there's a couple challenges. On-street parking was removed on the east side and that actually pertains to concept two. However, to mitigate tree impacts along this corridor, we did look to a couple locations where we removed parking on the west side. And I'll go through those here in a moment in one particular location where we did that. Um, this is the largest footprint, thus it does have more of a tree impact along that corridor. It was a probably approximately, I think if I recall, 28 trees potentially could be impacted. I want to take just a moment to kind of go through this. I'm not, uh, the level of stress stays the same as concept two. For pedestrians, it's two. For uh, cyclists, it's a one. That does meet ACHG's threshold. However, I do want to draw your attention to the aerial visual, the second one. You're gonna see here where the on-street parking throughout all of these slides that you could potentially click through is designated there in blue. So you follow along where that cursor is and go up north a little bit. You're gonna notice a bulbs out at that location and parking is removed. At this particular location, we have removed parking on the west side and it's to mitigate the tree impact. We felt comfortable with the removal of parking at this location because we believe adjacent streets do provide for parking availability for residents within those three parcels. Click over just one more and I'd like to showcase where we did this similar type of application with a buffer. As I mentioned, we reduce parking or we reduce the buffer from one to three feet along this corridor to mitigate tree impacts. This particular parcel right here at the corner, you're going to see at this location I don't think it is this one. Sorry, if we can. Sorry, if you can go up to. Oh, sorry, right here. Yes, it's right here. So uh, where the cursor is, at this particular location, we looked at that multi-use pathway and minimized the buffer. So that way we have less of an impact to this property. And as a result, we were able to ensure less of an impact to the 17 trees along this corridor, along this location. That type of application is seen throughout this corridor where locations where we minimize the buffer and put it in front of a parcel to mitigate any conflicts or impact to the tree itself. And I'm gonna let you on your own time, Bradley, go through each one of these. Um, should you have any questions, like I said, my contact information is there, you can give me a holler. Moving along, why is concept three? When we came out of the first outreach effort back in December, concept three is actually the front runner. It is the most versatile, does provide for pedestrian facilities on both sides, thus it does provide for the largest level of protection, but it is the largest footprint and thus provides greater impact to not only the tree canopy and potential locations, some property impacts. Um, 
Most of our proposals do fall within our public right of way tree impacts along this corridor. Several of the 20 plus trees that potentially could be impact are actually a result of them residing within the public right of way. Do want to highlight. If you can hit the, um, before we move off this aerial, I do want to highlight something else we changed. Can you go to number three, please? I'm sorry, actually go back to number two. Riley, I do want to highlight something that we did with this. Up there on the top at John's Landing, we did, based off of feedback from our first meeting that we had in December, we heard from some concerns. There's a gap of sidewalk at that location on John's Landing. And as a result, we are going to finish that gap of sidewalk so it does finish out the network there on John's Landing onto Collister. We can scroll through. That concludes my presentation for both concept two and three. Uh, any additional information pertaining to the RFB that's located throughout here or the bulb outs, I'll let you scroll through on, on your own time when you have an opportunity to actually enlarge them. Do you want to talk about the schedule and the next steps and how you can participate? So we do want to encourage uh, you to continue to participate as we move this forward. We only make the recommendation to the commission. It is the commission and the commissioners who make the ultimate determination which concept does move forward if a concept moves forward. You're going to have an opportunity to provide feedback at a public hearing. Whether or not you like it or you don't like this project, I want to encourage you to participate. Um, participation at the public hearing is critical dependent on what side you belong, if you like the project or you don't like the project. So encourage your neighbors and encourage folks to participate at that hearing itself. The survey will stay open until September 1st. So if your neighbors weren't able to log on or users were not able to log on, I want to encourage them to get to that survey filled out by September 1st. Bradley, we have a couple questions. Um, we can certainly go through those here in a second. You can feed, give me your feedback. If not, um, we can just conclude the presentation. So with that being said, if you have not logged on to menti.com. So Bradley, I'm going to give you a moment. Menti.com and use the code 45981521. Want to encourage you to actually log on there. Give us your feedback. Uh, we do hold on to this information. Both what's put in the Q&A is what, it, what else is put here is captured and we do use that as feedback to make a determination on which facility option should be moving forward. So with that being said, you're going to be the only one participating, which is fine because this is your opportunity to speak to me directly. Um, so I'll give you a moment, log on there and um, I'll be back in just a moment. Hey, Bradley, I'll give you a few more moments. Um, and if you don't log on, that's perfectly fine as well. Or you just like to get an idea of what your preference is. No worries, Bradley, we'll go ahead, uh, conclude this presentation where we're at. Wanna thank you for participating. Um, you're certainly welcome to get in touch with me. We can go back to the landing page and show my contact information. So projects at ashg.idaho.org, if you have any inquiries, any questions that you'd like to have me address. In addition to that, Brooke Green at 208-387-6318, and you can certainly call me. We can have a conversation over the phone. If you have any other questions, any concerns, I do want to encourage you to jump on projects at ashg.idaho.org. We do capture all that information, and we do use it for public records. This concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you for participating, and certainly give me a touch, get in touch with me should you have any questions. Thank you.
All right, thank you. Um, all right, we'll be in touch. Have a wonderful evening.